Model Rocks 321 here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the Space Shuttle. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, thumb up the video, and also ring the bell notification or click it on so when the new videos come out, you'll be the first to know and you can watch some more videos, especially the new content that I'll be dropping. So today we're going to be talking about the Space Shuttle. The SD Space Shuttle kit is kit number 1284, now vintage. This is not being made anymore. It's the same number as the older version, the first, first, first shuttle when it first came out. This is part of the Master Series one. I just printed these instructions off because this wasn't my original build. It wasn't my build. I do have this kit in the package form, but um, or a brand new one. And I have another one that's built. This is the one I flew recently. If you've been following the channel, I flew it and it had a crash. I mean, it wasn't trimmed correctly. I thought it would give some kind of a glide, but it nosedive and it kind of crushed the nose, which is right here. Which I just kept, um, I used this to make the mold, which we'll, which we'll talk about, and um, we'll talk about how he did that. And I'll give you guys a link to pot to, to buy the vacuum former to be able to make your own um, parts and stuff. So like I said, this kit is from way, way back in the days. I think these things came out, oh man, I forget what year now, um, kit number 1284. It was way back in the 80s, if not late 70s, going into the 80s, and they ran for a while, then they went out of production. But um... Yeah, so I've just been working on mine, getting it all restored back up. As you can see right now, this part is pretty much all restored. Um, I'm going to use these decals here. I didn't quite, I followed what Estes had here. I think the only, what they had was, um, this is the Master Series, so they upgraded it with the brown um, uh, fuel tank. Whereas the original shuttle that came out, they were showing it with the white fuel tank like Columbia when it flew first in 1981. I think they just had schematics. They were able to put something together. I don't even think the shuttle had flown yet when that kit first came out. Um, but for mine, for this one, I went with the paint scheme of the real shuttle. So I printed this off from Rocket to the World. And I looked at other material to get more detailing marks. As you can see here, I detailed some of this out. On the SD shuttle, they have this is gray or something. I went with the way the shuttle looks uh, on um, in real life, the real picture version. Here, I went with the gray along here, which SDs did recommend you do that in gray under here. I just went in with some testers and painted it. Here, I used some, um, some thin uh, vinyl material just to make that air break. So I did that. I did all the engines again, all painted to the proper colors. I went down in there inside those channels with some black just to give it that really accurate look here I did some um, paint all on there all on that nose this is the nose that we're going to talk about in a little while this is a mold which I made from this right here from the cast this was clay well I first made it in this yellow clay regular everyday yellow hobby clay just to practice then I went and I reshaped it again in this um, hard clay so I can always make a nose now if I need to but I don't want to make another. I want this. <laughs> I want this to be trimmed out right. Here we have the um, elevons. They are up. I'm going to be pulling them to make them go a little lower for the first trim. Actually, I'm going to either try to find a way to swing test this or throw this in some soft grass just to get it trimmed. Um, it's turning out really nice though. I'm happy with it. I, re I repainted everything. I did the whole bottom again. I pulled off all those decals that were there. We did that color. Um, did this with black stripping there and uh, those panels on top with the squares. So just having a lot of fun with it. Um, as far as decals and getting it, I have a bunch of these right here. This is from Sticker Shock. It gave you many, one, two, three, like four orbiters you can do. And they give you different, um, the names that are, they give you Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, and Atlantis. But no Endeavor though, I really wanted to do Endeavor. I gave Enterprise, Enterprise is just a test vehicle, I believe, not a dummy. I'm not even sure if that was a real flyer. I don't think they ever launched Enterprise. I think that's just a, was a mock-up. I believe. I think it was one that they launched off of um, the 747 or whatever size that jet was just as a test, I believe. So I have my um, the canopy. I have all the decals here, and I'll be adding those soon to finish this up. Um, and that'll be it, man. It's looking really good. I mean, it's very, you know, it looks nice. Shape-wise, everybody knows that these aren't accurately shaped. I wish they really did it, the real shape. I mean, you have the flight fins. It would have been a lot more better, a lot more scale. But this probably what they came up with that'll... Probably fly best, I guess, I guess. But I always wondered about that shape and why they did that. Next up, yeah, the book I was using was this right here. It says NASA Space Shuttle, 1981. 1981 onwards, all models. Owner's Workshop Manual from Zenith Press. These are really nice books. And I looked in here just for some closer decal details on it. Um, there's a fuel tank. I don't know what page it was where I found some like close-up of the nose section. 
And I was able to get in there. That's some, that's some nice images of the engines. Yeah, so this is a really, really good book of all, everything about the shuttle, man. It's all detailed. Um, I think it's later in the book. Yeah, so is this Endeavor? No, this is actually Enterprise. So maybe Enterprise was a um, was a test vehicle. Yeah, this is the one where they released. So maybe it was Enterprise and Endeavor was one that really flew. Yes, Endeavor flew because Endeavor's in California now at the Science Center. I actually saw that one in uh, the California Science Center. So my mistake on that. Yeah, Enterprise was a, a you know named after Starship Enterprise from Star Trek. Yeah, this image right here really show you some close up details and get, be able to get some color and stuff um, done. This is Discovery, and I noticed like different changes with the shuttles too. I, I see some changes um, where different tile markings and tiles were a little bit different. So that little notch right there, I think I added that little black corner piece right there, just to give it a little more accuracy. And it's gray along the edge. Um, you can weather this; it's kind of dirty. You can you can do it many ways. Mine actually, from handling it, it did get dirty. I mean, I thought my hands were clean, but on the side there and on the top, it did get dirty, which I may clean up or I may leave. I, don't, I may leave it. It looks kind of it looks cool. It looks cool like that. So yeah, this book is really nice. Um, I'm trying to find was another page that I used for some uh, for some detailing. Probably won't be able to find it right now, but yeah, this is a really good book though. Yeah, right here is where I learned about those other markings, the stuff that you see, but you don't think about those little those squares right there on the wing. You can see all those squares. I went and I redid those. And one thing I also want to do that's See on here and on these early versions of the shuttle, they had the U.S. flag here. Then later on, they started doing the NASA meatball logo here. So, or either here. On one of these sides, there's going to be a meatball logo. But in these decals, I don't have one. So I'm going to need one that's probably about a quarter inch, if not a half inch round. And I'm going to put it on the wing. Whatever side wing is, I think it goes on this wing, if I'm not mistaken. I forget. I'm just going to look. And I'm uh, probably make one out of, I don't have any more water slide paper, but I'm going to get that. Um, I need some more of that anyway. So just some stuff that I'm looking at, I'm um, looking at doing. Yeah, on here they have it. They don't show you. Yeah, so even on this one, they put U.S. flag here and then uh, they put flag here and U.S. there. These are the extras instructions. So it's always changing. It's always changing. And on here they have NASA. This is Rockets of the World. He had NASA and this was the Challenger. So Peter Rawway, however, he, um, yeah, he did this. So just from the specs that he had. But yeah, there's always all kinds of little detailings on this thing. You can do these squares. That's on the solid rocket boosters. So there's many, many things you can do with this. Um, so, but this is all complete, just minus the decals. Once I get the decals on there, this will be ready to go. Um, I got to take it out and trim it. I'm going to have to balance it again. You want, they want you to hang this from the ceiling. Make sure it's level. If it's too nose heavy, you're supposed to take nose away, but take weight away. But now I'm already, I had it balanced before I added all this, the decals. So, and the paint. Hopefully the paint didn't add too much more weight. I don't think it did. It feels still light, but you know, you know, physics and things are like that. So next up is the I'm redoing it all, man. I'm redoing it all. So this is the um solid rocket boosters and the fuel tank. I'ma go ahead and I'm gonna redo these up. I'm gonna actually get these lines, these O-rings that are on the boosters. I'm gonna get those put in. I know these are black and they have some tan below each one of them. So I'm going to look at possibly doing that or maybe not. It may just be all black. I'm going to see if I can find some thin tape or vinyl. I may do it if I can find the right color. But I'm going to go back and do this in that orangish color. I bought this satin orange today. This is perfect. This is a gloss orange. I'm not going to go with the gloss because that thing's more of a matte. I'm going to use this right here. It's already satin. No de de details have to go in there, so I don't have to worry about them not sticking to the satin paint. So that's what I'm going to do. The boosters will be gloss white. I'm going to go gloss white with these probably. I'm going to check the color and make sure it's, they're gloss and not flat. But I'll probably go with gloss white, do the decaling, detailing, and um, that'll be the orange. This is already primered. I'm leaving this rough. I'm going to leave this rough because if you know, this is uh, sprayed with a foam. It's sprayed with a foam, and that foam turns that yellowish brown orange color. They say once it's in the sun or something like that, it's changing, it turns orange, it starts out white, from what I understand. And um, I'll, I'll do that. But then this, these will be white. I'm just going to put the details on there and the decals. I have a couple for it. And um, that's all that's going to be the deal with this. It's going to be really nice. I think it's going to be a nice looking model when it's all done. But I'm happy with this. Um, this nose I had to shape by hand. Now let me show you the machine that I use for that. And if you want to get a vacuum for a machine, you can do all kinds of stuff where they're super cool, super easy to use. So let's take a look at that right now. So this is the vacuum forming machine that I have. Um, really simple to use. 
makes a little bit of noise when you do the vacuum forming, but it works really nice. If you need to make little parts for anything that you do, um, when it comes to make little parts out of plastic anyway, it'll it'll take care of that. I use this evergreen styrene plastic. This is the 0.5 millimeter. I think the one millimeter may be better. Um, this stuff right here worked really well. This is by this company because they make a mold machine too. This um, mold press. They make they make one too, but their plastic that comes with it is this clear plastic right here, which is thicker. This is probably the correct thickness, um, even though this, what this says the thickness. I don't think it has the thickness on here, but this plastic is it feels a lot thicker and it seems a lot better than the evergreen styrene at 0.5 millimeter. I think the evergreen is better when it's one millimeter, so it'd be similar to this. So what I did was, as explained before, I um took a piece of clay. Once I knew that this, once this was damaged, I knew I was going to make a new one. I shaped this. Then I went back. I made it in this clay that dries by air hard. I put a little hole in there just so some air can get down in there. And what you do is to make this work. Once it's all plugged in, you'll take a sheet of styrene plastic, whatever plastic you use, use as your mold, or to make your um your new your new piece. You put it in, lock it down. And you'll take your piece and put it underneath here. You sit it under this platform like that. So once it's sitting on underneath there, you'll start the heat process. You turn on the heat button. That will, and this is your heater. You'll put that like that. You'll start the heat. I don't have anything to really mold, so I'm not going um, to waste a piece of plastic. So you'll turn it on. It'll get hot. Then once it's starting to get hot, you will look under here. It'll start to sag. The plastic will start to sag. Once it sags a little bit, that's when you'll press this button right here. That's your vacuum button. You'll hit that button. It'll suck the air down. It'll pull down. Once it pulls down, you go ahead and turn the heat off, flip this around, and pop it out immediately. So once you take it out, you'll have, it'll be down on here. This is the arm. Also, this is the lever on the side. You'll pull down on top of the piece really hard. Then you do your vacuum. My mistake. So once you do that, this is make believe. You'll then you'll pull your piece out, and your vacuum will be in there. This is just a dummy piece that one that went bad. I was still getting used to it, just learning it, and you can see it didn't give a good mold there. But this is an example to show you of how it would look. Then you just cut it out, and you got your piece, and you're ready to go. You'll pull, you'll pop this out of there. This will be inside the mold. This will be in there. You pop it out, and you're good to go. One trick that I learned um, from people: you can add cornstarch to whatever you're gonna. I add just a little dusting of cornstarch to your piece so when you pop it out it'll come out of the mold easier it'll come out of your new shape easier so then you cut this out if this was a good one you cut it out this is just a trial and error one to make my uh, make the shuttle orbiter news cut that out and then you'll be good to go let this cool down before you put it away if you got to make another mold do the same thing put your plastic in there lock it down put the piece under here raise this back up to raise this up it has like a little two levels Raise it back up, put that back around while it's heating. You'll watch it sag. This lever on the side, I can show you that lever, there's a lever. You'll take that all the way down, pull it down tight on here. This is make believe. Pretend it's already, it has it on there. It'll go all the way down like that. It'll make a mold. When you press the button to vacuum those holes, it'll suck to the piece. A couple seconds, not even like a half second or a second, one second. Pop it back up, turn everything off, get your piece. It's not even hot. Pop it out of there and you'll be good to go. So that is the process pretty much. And that's how I made this nose. Like I'm super happy with it. Like it came out really, came out really nice. Came out really nice. I'm not saying it's 100% perfect, perfect, but to be shaped by hand and um, just by eyeballing this, eyeballing, eyeballing the crushed one, um, it came out pretty, came out pretty good. It came out pretty good. So all of this needs decals and I'll, I'll be good to go. And I'll get this back up in the air and um, get it trimmed first and then I'll get it back up in the air. But guys, if you want to get one of these mold machines, um, just check my check the link in the description. Use that link. Go to Amazon. Order it from there. That's where I got this one. Came and you know how Prime is. It comes really quick. Day, next day, sometimes the same day or whatever. Um, but you can get one of those. Just use my I'll use the link below. Shop Amazon. Also, use the SS discount code. It's a IN underscore 321. Go to Essie's, put stuff in your cart. IN underscore 321. Some people said that it didn't work for them because they used it before. I'm checking on that, but go ahead and try anyway as I check on things. They may change some things up over there. We'll see. I'll let um, my guy know. So just go ahead and give that a shot. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you got value out of this, support the channel any way you can. Check the links below. Like I said, the Amazon link, the Amazon link is there. <laughs> 
The PayPal link and Cash App link is there if you want to help out, contribute, whatever you want to do. And I appreciate you guys. It's my Rocks 3, 2, 1, and I'm out.